This week we will concentrate on the next element of music, rhythm. To put you in the mood, pause this presentation and listen to George and Ira Gershwin's fascinating rhythm. The first word you need to know concerning rhythm is the beat. The beat is what makes us tap our toes. The beat makes us want to move. The beat is built into us into our heart beat. Perhaps you have been annoyed by a classmate or family member tapping a pen on the table to music only they can hear. Well, that's caused by the beat. I have never heard this famous march played without people clapping along. Listen to the Stars and Stripes forever and feel the power of the beat. I dare you not to respond physically in some way. In written music and music theory, notes of different shapes are assigned differing values of time. The top note on this page, the whole note and its corresponding rest, is said to have four beats. There's that word again. It's called a whole note because in 4-4 time it fills up the whole measure. The half note beneath it gets two beats and fills up half the measure. The quarter note gets one beat and fills up a quarter of a measure, and so on down the line. Half notes move twice as fast as whole notes. Quarter notes move four times as fast as a whole note, and so on. If we were to perform the notes on this page altogether, the sixteenth notes at the bottom would move the fastest. On the previous slide you heard mention of measures in music. A measure for our purposes is the space between measure or bar lines. Those are the vertical lines you see here. All those numbers and letters are called time signatures. The first is 4-4. Four, four. The top number indicates how many beats there are in one measure, in this case, four. The bottom number is like the bottom number of a fraction and indicates what kind of a note gets one beat, in this case, a quarter note. The next time signature, that looks like a C, has come to be called common time and is the same as 4-4 four, four time. The next, 2-2, two, two, tells us there are two beats in a measure and a half note gets one beat. The next symbol, a C with a line through it, is commonly called cut time and is the same as 2-2 two, two time. 2-4 two, time means two beats to a measure with a quarter note getting one beat. 3-4 time means three beats to a measure with a quarter note getting one beat. 6-8 time means there are six beats to a measure with an eighth note getting one beat. Are you confused yet? Don't worry. You have undoubtedly seen conductors of bands or choirs directing their groups, waving their arms to keep their group together. Now you get to be the conductor, feeling the beat by moving your arm in directing patterns. First, practice the pattern without music then pause the presentation and listen to Dixie twice. The second time, you be the conductor. Direct beats, not words. Now, direct our national anthem, which is in 3-4 time. First, practice the 3-4 directing pattern without the music, then go to the home page and click the link for this song. Please note that this song begins on beat 3 on the word O, oh, then the word say is on beat one. Give it a go. Repeat as necessary to feel the beats. Again, direct the beats, not the words. And don't feel bad if you get confused. Now practice the 4-4 four -four directing pattern. Practice it without the music and then to deck the halls. The word deck is on beat one, halls is on two, Bows is on three, and Holly is on four. This arrangement contains a bridge. All the stars come out to shine, etc., which was not in the original. That's okay. 
the bridge is still in 4-4 four, four time. Not all melodies have music that occurs on beats 1, 2, 3, or 4. In much popular music and jazz and country, notes fall between the beats. This is called syncopation. In the song Camp Town Races, which is in 4 time, the da of do da falls between the beats. Direct this song in either 2 4 or 4 4 and note the syncopation of da. Count along as you direct to note the syncopated note does not fall on a number. As you know, not all songs move at the same speed. The Star Spangled Banner is much faster than A Show Can Farewell, even though both songs have three beats in a measure. The word musicians use to indicate the speed of the beat is tempo, which is Italian for time. You see here a list of Italian words that indicate different tempi, along with the number of beats per minute each word indicates. By the way, the use of Italian in music goes way back to the Renaissance when Italy was the place to be if you were a musician. Largo is slow. Prestissimo is fast. You also see here a metronome which ticks the beat at whatever number of beats per minute you like. If you have an iPod you can get a free app of a metronome that looks just like this one. Listen to Handel's Largo from the opera Xerxes. Note the slow pace at which this song moves. Oftentimes, composers would label songs with the tempo at which they wanted the piece to be performed. This piece has been arranged for choirs to the words, Thanks be to thee, and is often sung by church choirs at Thanksgiving. Listen to it three times. Once for overall impression, wants to note the musical elements involved like melody and rhythm and once more to examine how it affects you. Next we move up the tempo ladder from Largo or Slow to Andante or a walking tempo. Again listen three times. If you'd like to conduct it's in 4-4 four, four time. This piece is also called the theme from the movie Elvira Madigan. If you like, you can look up her name on Wikipedia and learn about her tragic love story. Eine kleine Nachtmusik is German for a little night music. This is the Allegro from this suite of compositions. Again, listen three times. It's in 4-4 four, four time if you'd like to conduct. This short prestissimo piece by the Russian composer Rimsky-Korsakov has become famous for its fast tempo. This version is by the Canadian Brass, which has performed locally on various occasions. If you check on YouTube, you can also find vocal groups doing this piece while pretending to avoid that pesky bee. So far, I have said little about music therapy. That is by design. I want you to concentrate on learning the vocabulary of the elements of music so when we do talk about music as a therapy, we will understand each other. As I close this week's lecture, I want to introduce you to the words entrainment and ISO principle, which will be important in our future discussion. I won't define them here, I just want you to be aware of these words as we continue. They will have a connection to rhythm in music as a therapy.